Save a horse, ride a cowboy. I won't. <clears throat> Based. I, w- I, will f- I would fuck anyone who changed their vote from Trump to Kamala right now. Um, you want the Hunger Games or the Handmaid's Tale, boys? Let's talk about that. I would like the hand- Hanger Games. No. Yeah, I'd take the Hunger Games. Hey there, I'm Leanna Bresson, the online editor for The Griff. And I'm Zach Defoe, the digital content editor for The Griff. Welcome to The Griff After Dark. It is a bi-weekly recap of all things Griff, McEwen, and downtown Edmonton. Ooh. Today's a somber day for us, for everyone, I think. Why is that? Um, well, in case you haven't heard, the Trump won the presidential election in the United States. So, uh, it's time to just kill ourselves. Or, uh, if you're like me, we will be moving to Scotland. That's a pretty good choice. I agree. I uh, the whole Trump thing is quite a phenomenon in the in the J school world. Um, the study of information and misinformation. Twenty sixteen uh, is sort of becoming known as the beginning of what we call the post truth era, where media really began like an active, actively separating from its role in the public sphere because of sort of the guidance question mark of Donald Trump and um, like populist right wing ideologues saying that the mainstream media is full of shit. And in some instances, you know, some criticisms are valid, but now we're in a weird spot where we can't almost can't inform the public because how do you inform a public that fundamentally doesn't believe in knowledge anymore? And I think that's where we're at and that's really fucking bleak. So uh, hold on, because it's about to get a lot fucking worse. Yay. Yippee. Just remember, guys, our uh, election is coming up. So keep what is happening in the United States in mind. And keep what the UCP is doing in, in mind. Mm-hmm. Used to be bad. Used to be bad. Um, in my opinion, anyway, the UCP is, is not very good. Um, they're snake people. Well, they definitely have destroyed a lot of what Canada felt was good. Like, why are they attacking trans people now? I I was talking to Rowan, well, the main person, the founder of uh, Trans Rights Yig, and for them, they're talking about it on Saturday at a, like a protest, and they were saying it's like, it's completely like a false flag. It's something that the UCP is using to sort of veil their their other failures they're more generic failures like unemployment unhoused people inflation etc they're failing to address those things so they're just throwing this veil this this legislation that really is about governing the bodies and identities of 0.3 to 1 percent of the population and using that creating and weaponizing a a boogeyman fear in the hearts and minds of parents throwing it under the guise of parental rights and then just getting all these bills passed as quick as fucking humanly possible with as little consultation as possible without really thinking or caring about it because again it is only going to directly affect a very small percentage of the population so in the worst way it's punching down in all directions i think we really need to look at like why they're trying so hard to control certain people in certain bodies. Like, if you haven't noticed, there's a lot more anti-abortion propaganda coming up across the province. If you go down any road like Calgary Trail, you'll see them posted everywhere. Go to Costco and usually they'll have like those big trucks with anti-abortion stuff on the back. And so it's not just trans people, it's, it's women, it's people of color, it's everyone is getting attacked right now. It's a united front from a united conservatism Yay. Mm, it's not very cool why why do you think that is why do you think all these are being rolled into one and why do you think they're all being sort of ripped out at once i i think it's about control i i think like especially donald trump he says make america great again what does that mean it means going back to a time for white conservative men who aren't gay or who are straight they 
have the advantage. That's when they had the advantage. And for everyone else, that's just not the case. But they target the people who can force other people to do what they want. There are women who can't go and vote because their husbands threaten them not to. I read a story today, actually, there was an 81 year old who voted for the first time for Kamala because her husband threatened to kill her if they did it, if she went and voted for anyone else, if she went and voted at all, period. She was 81. That's the first time she voted. And that's crazy to me because there is a larger threat at hand than just Trump. It's the people around us. Well, I mean, a politician can't stand alone. And you don't know who they are. I can probably guess the people wearing the red hat is probably, you know. Th those are good indicators. We're, not, we're marking them. <laughs> <laughs> They're marking themselves. Well, yeah, it's a, it's a shared process of signification. It's a, it's a pride in, I guess, whatever this is, whatever you want to call it. I would call it some mean words, so I'm not going to say it. But it is, it is like a rejection fundamentally of the idea of epistemology, of a truth that isn't prescribed to you. And ironically, a lot of what holds that up is this idea that scarce knowledge or esoteric knowledge is valuable, but the, the esoteric knowledge is only really based on what you're being told. So it's a movement that says, we're not going to believe what you tell us, but they're still, the, the root of that is we're going to believe what someone else is telling us. That's giving that person or people a, a tremendous level of power and control. And, and even like the modern contrarian, as opposed to the original contrarian, which is somebody who takes ideas in a skeptical way and analyzes them and, and takes what makes sense based on argument and leaves what doesn't, uh, the modern contrarian just rejects things based on an ideology. So if it's like you're rejecting everything based on its popularity, you are still equally controlled by popularity rather than the ideas in their own merit. And this is an ass way to live your life. People said, I think they said the same thing about hipsters way back in like 2010. It's like, oh, you rejected so much that now you became popular. Like it, it it's happening again. Oh God, yeah. no more mustaches. <laughs> Exclusive or privileged knowledge. Um, this is the core of most conspiracy theory ideologies too. And it's also like, the idea that things are actually secretly okay, but there's an evil Machiavellian entity that is making them not okay. And you have to attack that boogeyman instead of maybe addressing the fact that things are not okay. How do you accept the truth of like a truly indifferent universe? People do in different ways. In this case, it's, it's denialism. It's no, everything is okay. I can blame it on Trudeau. My wife will come back once I vote for Trump. Um, which is a confusing sentence because it mixes countries, but that's kind of where we're at in Alberta right now. I've been told also, worry about your own country. And I'm like, so you haven't seen Make Alberta Great Again hats floating around? Like like nothing trickles north in your mind? You haven't seen, who was it? Um, What was his name? He came to Rexall, or not Rexall. Um, Tucker Carlson. Tucker Car Thank you. I keep thinking Tanner Carlson for some reason. I wish. <laughs> um, yeah. Like, Tucker Carlson came here, and she, like, Danielle Smith was happy about it. She brought him here to spread these lies to people in Alberta because, face it, we're easy to mold. But not all of us are. You have to look at the facts. I will not be doing that. I will never look at the facts. I'm a journalist. The facts are my enemy. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. That was a joke. That, that was, was a joke. joke. <laughs> Perfect at home. Please, we, well, we will not issue an apology for that. Speaking of issuing apologies. Oh, no. The new mag sure is provocative, isn't it? <laughs> it's a little sexy, isn't it? <laughs> it's good. I've, uh, me and Amanda have found two copies now with the pa the front page ripped clean off. Really? Yeah, and I'm oh. wondering if that's, oh, I want to frame this, but I don't want to take the whole magazine with me. Oh, or, weird. oh, I hate this. I hate this so much. I hate this. Um, yeah. Go look at one. It's a photo of a person wearing a kifia is that how you pronounce that uh, i go i'm white go look at it <laughs> go look at it right go now. look at it yeah they're all over the university and you know sometimes you'll find one on a on a train <laughs> occasionally yeah we we know we're heading in the right direction because some of our some of our writers 
and contributors are getting hate mail. Yes, which we don't condone. Do not send people hate mail, please. (laughs) Please don't do that. But if you do, send some to David Slater because he's doing great. He puts them on his wall, frames them with like a picture of you. It's like a little shrine. It's so cute in the back of his closet. Um, That's a joke. I've never seen David Slater's closet before. Yeah, I've Um, never gotten into the closet. mm, I've come out. (laughs) No, uh, like people on the Griff, one person on the Griff website said, oh, this is an unethical piece of journalism, blah, 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 blah. And it's about the, the, the pagers, the pager attack. I'm going to call it that because that's what it is. It wasn't an accident. It was an intentional engineered export of consumer products that were rigged to explode. That's fucked up. And this person coming in and saying, well, you didn't, didn't what? Didn't what? Uh, one of the criticisms was. Uh, the comment was spe- specifically saying there were no Jewish or students or faculties interviewed that disagree with this re- rhetoric. So essentially uh, Slater only talked to people who were more Palestinian yeah, in the chain of victimization. Yeah. Yeah, it turns out it's really hard to uh, pursue someone who says that uh, terrorism using pagers is a good thing. And the thing about it is people assume we are unwelcome to people who want to go in the opposite direction of the, these views. But if you recall, like Ty says in every meeting, if you know anyone who wants to say anything against this or talk about it, talk about things about it who are Jewish or who have uh, Israeli background, then come to us. Come talk to us. We'd love to hear from you. Tell us your story. Yeah, and then you will be subjected to the same level of research package expectation that all contributors are. Yeah. One one thing we had, uh, there is, a, there is a, I want to talk, touch on a little bit here. There's an important delineation between also uh, submitting anonymously and having anonymous sources. These are two very different things. This came up in conversations with people. You can have anonymous sources, but A, you have to justify why that source had to be anonymous. And there's different levels of anonymity. There is information on background only. There is information without attribution. That's the first level sort of thing. And then information that is off record. But you cannot submit stuff anonymously because then it can be literally anybody. And that kind of goes against the mandate of the Griff's purpose, which is to serve students. So if we have an anonymous person writing, we we don't know who they are. And there isn't a super good reason to to protect that person's anonymity. That that is a huge problem because it could be literally anybody. It could be like a, I don't know a media bomb plant, which is a real thing. I don't know if that's a correct term, but somebody who exists to see discord and disarray in the media production process. This is a, maybe I'm putting my tinfoil hat on for that a little bit. I think we have had people write anonymous articles before. I. I I want to say it was last year when everything about trans rights started coming out from Danielle Smith. Um, but we knew, like the staff knew who was behind these articles. We were all told, we were all given sources for their opinion, where it came from. So people did complain like, oh, well, why won't they put their name? Sometimes people don't want to put their names behind an article because they're going to get attacked, but they still want to express their feelings and that's fine. But we do our due diligence enough to say whether it's okay or not. So in some articles, there will be last names blurred out because they want to respect, we want to respect their privacy. In Slater's article, he specifically states who did not provide his last name due to security reasons. And then said his family could have been part of these bombings. So it's important for us in, as a university and as students to protect ourselves as well as protect our contributors. Just so you guys know, contributors don't get paid to write this stuff. They're they're only, what they're getting back is experience in writing and portfolio pieces. So it's just, it's helpful to note that like, they're writing what they're passionate about. Yeah, and like regarding content surrounding Palestine and the, the, the protests of lack of action towards that, there is a significant like Muslim community in this school and that is a good and cool thing. Many of them have ties to Palestine or other conflicts in the Middle East through one degree of separation and maybe a couple more. Depends on the person, right? There is a significant like (laughs) pro-Israel bias in the West. There is so much resistance to cover like that conflict that has been ongoing for X amount of years. And over the last year, 
the coverage is more and more necessary. Like journalists in, in Gaza are being targeted explicitly. The IDF raided Al Jazeera. Like there are there are important stories that need exposure, need coverage, or need to be told. And the students are coming forward with these ideas. We're not the ones going, hey, you need to, pointing a finger, you need to write about this. No, this is stories that have gone largely untold, I would say. Yeah, I would agree. Anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, um, if, if, if you're, like, unhappy about that, please write a piece. True, yeah. Just come, like... We want to hear from everybody in the school. We have a lot of comms journalism people who write for us. Science peeps, where are you at? Like, we want to know about your research. We want to know what you're doing, man. Like, come talk to us. Business people, there will be heavy editing, but we're like, we know. We know you can't spell there. It's okay. <laughs> That's mean. You're a mean person. Uh, listen, you're mean. here. I'm going to be real with you guys, okay? My boyfriend, my partner, <laughs> had to cut out circles <laughs> in one of his business classes. And he got little gold stickers on an assignment. So, no, I'm going to be a little mean because I don't get gold stickers on my assignment, okay? Do you want a gold sticker right now? I would love a gold sticker right now. I want, I miss, I miss getting stickers. I miss that. The Griff does have stickers, but none of them are gold stars. Not yet. No. <gasps> Coming up next. Idea. <laughs> Anyway, that was a that was a long ramble. Well, um, what's going on in your life, Leanna? Um, Agatha all along ended, so I'm really sad about that. But I'm also like really happy because like <laughs> my boy's a little twink. <laughs> I'm a little. I'll show you later. <laughs> You're gonna show me your little twink. I'm gonna show you my little twink. He's so cute. Holy shit! <laughs> He's the baby of my baby. So <laughs> you can cut that whole thing. <laughs> I'm not gonna cut. That's going in the start. That's that's the start. My little twink. His name's Joe Locke, if you don't know. Why would I know that? Oh, he he's actually like he's on Heartstopper, which is on he's a little queer twink. He's a really cute. Oh yeah. He's so cute. Are there straight twinks? I thought that was he, explicitly a queer concept. It's probably specifically queer, but I wanted to make it known that he's gay. So my crush is like valid, but like I can't do anything about it. <laughs> What was your uh, favorite article from, from November? I'll be real with you, Leanna. I have not read all of them. I've been very busy and sweaty. We literally did red tired. lines. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I read the entire thing front to back, but did I read it or did I just look at it? Uh, I'm bad. I'm a bad person. Let no, me think. No, that's okay. What was your article? I'm just going to say it's yours. Yeah, it's the consent in LARPers. Mm, yeah, LARP yeah. and consent. LARP is a is a classically extremely troubled scene, and like Dark Ascension, Mason. I, I know that LARP. I know of it. I haven't played it, and I know Mason. I've I've met them like twice. They're a big fan of my stuff, which was surprising because my stuff sucks. But uh, that's mean to yourself. Yeah, good. No. Ooh. Nice. Um. But yeah, the uh, LARP was troubled for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. Long, long time. It was a huge issue because uh, people when you give a bunch of adults like f fucking a space of imaginative play that is sort of framed in a way that sexualizes action sexualizes storytelling i'm not going to mention the larp that did a lot of that i'll mention it starts with a uh, it rhymes with thunder world <laughs> That is mentioned in the article, so you can say it. Thank God. I do mention that, it. That yeah. is the elephant in the room. Yeah. Well, it, when Mason was telling me about it, I knew I had to include it in the article, but I don't say specifically like any events that went ha that happened. But, you know, when I was reading through the rule book, their guidelines, I was like, they at no point do they say immediately call the police when something happens. No. No, it's like your guild masters are going to be the police. They're going to be the judge, jury, and executioner. And that's it. And it's like, well, what if the person is their friend? They're not going to kick them out. You don't have to what if that. That was 100% of the case. It's always going to be somebody you know. It's always going to be somebody somebody knows. And it's like, oh, no, they're a good person to me, and therefore they can't be bad. And LARP was a community that, like, because it's such a niche hobby and because 
it was so interconnected and because for a long time there wasn't like a lot of outlets like people in positions of authority and LARPs had a huge amount of power over the people that cared about those communities and the people that that like cared about the people in the communities and so it was very hard for a lot of them to confront the reality that I'm part of something that is hurting people and uh there's a bunch of splinter larps that came out of underworld and they're all like putting safety to the front da is one of them chronicles was one of them someone's going to get mad about that because they're they're they have hurt feelings but uh yeah it was it was extremely bad all accounts i've heard has been extremely bad and the thing that really bothered me is like once covid was out and they were starting to run again everyone who had like stood by and like persecuted people and stood on their podium and said, you're a bad person. Don't support this person. They still went and they played the fucking games. They paid the money. And I'm like, and they're like, well, it's, it's not the same game. It's a different game, different ownership. I'm like, it's this, whatever's happening in the underworld franchise model is enabling abusers. You have to stop giving them your fucking money. And it made me furious because it's like your your principles are hard to uphold right now because it's inconvenient. You really want to do your thing. You really want to do your hobby. It's the only one that's running. But when things are difficult, that is when your principles are most important. If you just like fold right now, if you just fold as soon as things are hard, then everything you set up to this point is fucking worthless to me. That's yeah. actually such a good quote. That should be at the beginning. <laughs> Yeah, you know, well, let's just make it serious. The whole, th oh, yeah. all, all the most awesome. serious things we talk about. Um, but that is that is I'm impassioned about this because I had this argument with a, uh, a a couple partners of mine, and they just bent over backwards making excuses. And I'm like, you, the, you're you're using exceptionalism to avoid the discomfort that you're actually full of shit. Hmm. It's like the the person who's like, oh man, fuck landlords, and they buy a house and they start renting out rooms. It's the same fucking thing. Yeah. Same fucking thing. Unless they're really nice. Unless they're really nice landlords. They could be they could be great landlords, be like, Yeah, I'll give you I'll give you some money off this month because you're poor. I love those landlords. That's my mother in law. I love and respect the system that the system and community that Mason has built. I haven't played it because I suck. But um, if you are going to get into a LARP, a high action LARP, and it's, it's pretty like low commitment. It's, I think it's, they only run it like Saturdays during the day. Yeah. So it's not overnight or anything like that. From what I remember. I think they do some overnight, but it's not like once a week or anything. Yeah. That's a if you're gonna try something, I think DA is a good rule set to get into. Yeah. It's like, from what I remember. Plus, uh, yeah, Mason's very like, really passionate about it too. When we were talking, like, we had this huge heart-to-heart -heart that's not included in the article because it is, like, a very personal um, thing. This is, like, a hard topic for for me as a woman and, and for Mason, too, who has been connected a lot with these people. And for a lot of our readers and listeners, it's hard to talk about and it's hard to read. So, so read it. So read, read it twice. It. Read it. Read it twice. Read it a hundred times. It's on the website now. Um because I control the website, so. I control the spice. <laughs> I control what I put on there. I can take it off if I want to, mm -hmm. but I won't. Just gonna do a quick time check here. Oh yeah, go for it. What are we at? We are um, at pretty long. So pretty long, okay. Well, I think that's a good spot yeah. to wrap it up. Yeah. Uh, sorry, it's a little bit scattered today. I have in my notes, Provocative new mag, bed of backlash, <laughs> presidential, ooh, mm. and legislature bumbling, which we didn't get to. What Maybe. is that? Oh, Lord, I'll tell you after. Oh, okay. It's fucking, I'm so. Thanks for joining us for The Griff After Dark. Check out our Instagram page at The Griff Online for the latest and greatest on what's happening around McEwen. Bye. Goodbye. 500 cigarettes. <laughs> 500 cigarettes. So as we were getting ready to finish up our recording, our news editor, Liam Newbigging, sent us a Yeg Wave article essentially saying that Trudeau's government has officially banned TikTok from operating in Canada. That's fucked up. Yes. Um, 
CBC just reported it on it about an hour ago as well as we're recording this, so about 3.30 p.m. on November 6th. Um, the decision comes in wake of National Security Review of popular social media app. So, yeah, we we felt like we should probably mention something because that's a pretty big thing. <laughs> as we are the digital team and we post a lot on TikTok, if you didn't know. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't know what to do.